Hi everybody, welcome back to the Alaskan Man Cave. So what do you think I'm gonna do with a couple of totes, pump, and some PVC pipe, and some fittings, hose? Any ideas? Well, if you guess we're making a hydrographics dip tank, then good job. This is what we're doing today. So guys, when it comes to hydrographics, I'm no professional by any means. I'm just getting into it. Yeah. Let me just kind of go over the basics of a hydrographics dip tank. One, you need a fairly large surface area that you can lay out your film in the water and dip your parts through. So you gotta think about how big of parts you're gonna be dipping, what you anticipate, and maybe what you're gonna grow into in the future. So probably the number one thing is obviously having the surface area to dip through. You gotta choose what you want. Then uh, the next thing you're gonna have to have is a, a spray bar system to clean the surface of your water and remove all the excess junk. And then you'll have to have a, a pump and a sump. I'll show you how I'm going to manage these these items. One of the things that I should mention that is also important when it comes to a dip tank is a heater, right? To keep your water at temperature. And for the system that I'm working on here, I'm probably just going to add hot water from my sink and remove cold water, add hot water until I get the temperature where I need it. With that out of the way, let's move on, move on to what we're going to do with the pieces I got. So as you can see, I've got a chunk of PVC. I'm gonna use this for my spray bars. And I'm also gonna use it for you know, converting my pump from the, uh, the fitting here through a valve that I can control the pressure to my spray bars on. And then obviously over to the, to the hose. So that covers what I'm gonna do with the pump and the PVC. Show you what else I, I bought two of these totes this one here is going to be my sump and i'm going to put it over here on the end of this one so this will be my main dipping area and i'm going to cut a slot along this back, back side here that will control my water level of um, my, my pump being the sump here that will hose around to my spray bars which will push everything across the surface of the water through the slot. We'll have to build some type of uh, spillway to get the, get the water from the main tank into our sump and then our pump will circulate it back around and maintain a good water level and keep it clean on top. So that's kind of what we're going with. And we're just gonna to have to build, take some of these two by fours I got laying around, build a frame around it, um, support it underneath and on the side. So it, and obviously when we start filling this full of water, it's gonna bulge out. So we're gonna to have to support the sides and the bottom and this top rim, keep it under control, especially when we cut that slot, it's going to weaken that edge significantly. So we'll have to do some special work there. But all in all, I think with a little ingenuity, we can make this work. One of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this off right here, right along. So it stays flush all the way along the bottom here. And then I can take, take a two by four and it'll butt butt right up against the bottom of that. So in order to do that, I'm gonna probably just grab my cutoff wheel on a grinder and let her rip. Now our wood frame's gonna fit nice and tight up against the bottom of this. Should work real nice. Now I got a knife, I'm just gonna shave away that burr. Now for the end, I'm going to want to cut this off here, cut these off, cut those off, cut it across there. And we'll finish this off with a sawzall. Too bad. You can just clean that up with a knife. 
And I think on this end, we're gonna also cut this off so we can make our make our cut for our, our weir as close to the top of this as we can so we don't have to reach way down in there to dip apart. Now that we have this edge taken care of, we'll go ahead and start working on the two by four framing to go around. So for the frame, we're just gonna do a simple box. These, these legs here will go all the way down to the ground. We'll have a plywood base. We'll run another two by four along the bottom for support. That'll extend, cantilever out and hold our, our sump. And then we can, uh, we can fit in some pieces along the side here to hold the to hold the tub from bowing out when it fills with water. And then these ends, it works out really good that we can just flush it up right there and screw it in. So that should work out super nice. Now we got enough pieces cut that we can start screwing some things together. Start making our frame. There's the first one of our frames. Now we'll just have to figure out exactly where we want to put this guy and allow for our plywood. Very roughly together, but we're starting to get somewhere. There, we finished building the, the base. So now we can put some plywood on that and then we'll screw it into the rest of the frame. All right, the plywood's on, all decked out. It's ready to install onto our, uh, onto our tub. Now we just need to square up our legs and screw them together. Well, how about that? Looks like we got ourselves a little frame. Should work pretty good. There, we've got our tote on the end now, all secure. I had to change this because I couldn't get the tote out, so I had to put in a different piece so I can get the lid on and off and get that tote up if I want to get it out. So, a little bit of a modification on the fly. So now, I think we're ready to start cutting the, the slot in our tote, our big tote. So I'm gonna cut the slot, you can see the line here and then I'm gonna cut it all the way up to it's even with this bottom edge. So what I'll do is I'll drill a hole through here and so I can cut it from the other side and then I'll cut this one from this side. That way I'll have about an inch tall slot and then I'll be able to slide a little, like a, a little plate in across the top to uh, let the water run over and then pour into the lower tote. Okay guys, now that I got this cut, kind of cleaned up, see how flimsy that inside edge is? I think what we're gonna do there is I'm, I'm gonna take some measurements of, of this edge and I'm gonna 3D print a piece that will, that will slide over on top of this and be angled on either side so the water will run up and then back down and then I can take some sheet metal and extend out the lip. But for right here at the transition, I can just build a little piece that'll come down, I don't know, maybe a half an inch to help stiffen up this edge. And it'll also give me a, a, a better transition point and I can just do a good silicone job on that to seal it up. So I think, I think we're done for today. And I think I'm gonna go in and sit down at the computer and, and design uh, this edge and we'll get it on the 3D printer. All right, 
Overnight, the 3D printer finished printing our, our little transition piece. As you can see, it's got the, that'll follow the, the shape of the tote that we cut. We'll drop that in there. It'll stiffen up that edge and uh, it'll provide a little transition for the water to ride up and over and out of the tote and down to, the, down to our sump tote. So let's go ahead and put this on and see how it fits. That really stiffens up this edge too, so when the water's in there, that won't, won't flex too much. I think that's a good fit. Well, if you watched my how to build a paint booth video, you'll know I'm not a sheet metal guy, but <clears throat> I do have this chunk of metal I bought when we did the paint booth, and I think I can use this to help make the little spillway to transition from our 3D printed piece down into our sump. So I guess we'll do a little layout and cutty cutty and try to do some bending. I think this is a good time to introduce you to an old friend of mine, old Laurel here, made in Laurel, Mississippi, 450 pounds. It's a workhorse and I love it. So anyway, we're gonna use this far edge to do a, to bend our a lip on this. I'm just gonna set it right there on my line. And we're just gonna bend that over. Do that one more time. So now we have a nice little trough. Hopefully that will fit on our piece. Okay, I've made a couple of cuts here. I've test fitted, it does fit in there. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to bend about an eighth inch over and let that hook on the bottom side of our 3D printed piece. Then we'll follow the, that contour out and then this will spill down into the sump. So we're gonna see if we can't do a little fancy bending here. So we got that lip bent. Now we'll slide it up to our next point. Next one is going to be right there. Believe it or not, it's fitting pretty well. Now that we have our piece bent, we're going to see if it'll fit in there. onto that bottom lip and that'll let the water flow right off off the side and down into our lower sump. I think that's going to work real nice. I've uh, done a little bit of the plumbing and I've got my spray bar installed and I've run some hose and I'm pretty well roughed in where my pump's going to be so let me show you what I got. This is the spray bar setup. So I've just uh, drilled some holes through the spray bar and I've routed it up and over the top. And it's going to run through that hose around the back side. Over here on the pump. You can see I've come up with a T to my hose that goes back around. 
And then I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna have a valve right here, which I don't have the fittings for, but it's got a 90, 90 down and back into the sump. And that's where I can blow off some pressure if my spray bars are blowing too much water. So. All right, guys, for the filter, I'm gonna use the lid and I've got some of this. We're gonna use that. And we'll just cut it to fit inside of our lid. Maybe use one or two layers of this. And then what we'll do with our lid is we'll just drill a whole bunch of holes in the lid so the water can drain through it nice and quickly. All right, we're ready to put, start putting some water in this. fill up the other sump container for a little bit. All right, guys, this is full. I've got enough water in the sump to, uh, to cover my pump. So we're about ready to give this thing a whirl. I've uh, plugged it into this power strip just so I can have a switch to turn it on and off. At least that'll work temporarily. So I have no idea what this is gonna do. Everything I've done so far has just been a wild ass guess on what needs to be done. So let's see if any of my guesswork is close to being right. Let me give it a shot. Well, looks like I got lucky. Better lucky than, than good, right? It looks like it works pretty darn good. Woohoo! I think that's working about perfect. So I'm gonna go see if I can find a uh, fish tank heater that I can use to keep my water hot when I'm ready when I'm up and running, so I think that's gonna keep the surface of my water good. It's draining nice. Doesn't seem to be backing up on the filter. I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. I might be able to shorten up our little our little outfeed ramp there into the into the sump, but looks like it looks like it's working good though. I think I'd like to call this a success. So hopefully you've enjoyed this build. Maybe you've learned something. Maybe you think I'm a dumbass, but looks like I got me a dip tank. So I'm looking forward to giving that a shot. And I'm sure you'll see uh, a video on that real soon. I really appreciate you watching. Give me a thumbs up, comment if you'd like, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.